Hi guys, I'm Peter and today I'm going to talk to you about U functions. What are those, how to use them properly and what different types of U functions exist in real. So um, this is a basics tutorial and I would myself appreciate it a lot if I saw it like four months ago I guess. And Epic Games has a very good documentation of U functions, of reflection system, of many many parts of their engine. And this video is just a shortcut for you if you are diving into uh, C++ programming on Unreal Engine or if you have some experience, I hope you will find some useful stuff here. So, what are the U functions? Well, essentially these are the C++ functions in uh, the Unreal project code that are exposed to the Unreal. And they are the part of some class that you have. Uh, and their, their exposure to Unreal means that, first of all, you can use them in blueprints in different ways. Second is that you have the full reflection functionality of those. And I will talk about reflection later in a different video with the delegates and different types of delegates and how you can actually apply them in all the different and interesting ways. And these are very uh, nice and useful tools, of course, for the game programming. But in this video, we will cover the basics of your functions. So, the way how you write your functions is that you have a class and you can write them in a protected or in a public um, accessibility domain. And of course, I, there, is, there is no need to write them in private, uh, except for some situation. But keep in mind that if you write them in private, you cannot use them in blueprints because blueprints are inheriting classes from the, uh, your class and you cannot inherit from the private variables, they stay in the class that you define them. So you can define them in the U functions and protect it and this is one of the ways that you will be able to access it from the class blueprint only. Um, but typical usage is that you define them in the public domain and then different uh, other different objects of different classes they can also call those functions. And this is a macro that is needed to be defined in order to use it to uh, say that this function is a U function. And there are different metadata and other stuff, but in order to make the U function work, you have to specify two things. First of all, is the type of U function, like blueprint callable, uh, blueprint native event, implementable event, pure, exec, and so on. And you have to specify a category. And category doesn't seem to be necessary at first, but Actually, it is necessary because this is the, the category that here in, in the engine when you are in blueprints you will be using to specify here. Okay, so how do you use your functions? Well, first of all, let's start, let's actually start from the end of my code. Here we have this blueprint pure function and it does some minor, compu minor computations or whatever. And the idea of Blueprint Pure is that it is used for the calculations. So it doesn't change anything in the class. It doesn't change any uh, class members. It just used to, to compute some codes or something, basically. So let's see if I can actually pull it from here. Yeah, I can. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't have the as exact node. It just returns a value. So you can get some, you know, mathematical value from it, like uh, proper pi or whatever, and this is this is what is it used for. So it's it's more simple, and if you make this kind of function, then you say, hey, it doesn't, it doesn't um, have the executable node, and it doesn't make any changes to the class, it just returns some value. Maybe it computes something like uh, some kind of mathematical formula, and it returns the result, or gradient, whatever. And this is useful in certain situations, and let's get to the next one, which is probably the most used. And this is the blueprint callable U function. And yeah, this is really popular stuff. Uh, you typically will be using this. So if I just go here and I say, here it is. So just keep in mind, this is a player char blueprint, which is inherited from eternal player. This is my class. And this is the class where I define my U functions. So this is how it works. So Blueprint callable your function has an executable node and 
this this node is always there. This is a target. So you, you execute it on self, or you can execute it in different class. If you you can get other uh, eternal player uh, object. Sorry, not class, but object. Yeah. So you have the execut executable node, which means that you have to give it from some some somewhere. Let's say from here, and then the function will be executed in the runtime, and it can have, of course, a return inputs. Uh, sorry, outputs like this. So if we go here, we call things. It it can have a return value. So you use blueprint callables for many things. You use them to compute something, just like blueprint blueprint pure, or you use them to modify values of yourself or of, or of other objects. So for example, in the code, I can pass some stuff here like. Uh, uh, references and pointers to other objects, and we can do stuff with these objects. So basically, the blueprint callable is just a, uh, a basic uh, blueprint function, a function that can be used in blueprints. It can do all kinds of stuff in the Unreal system. And this function has multiple outputs and some arguments. And what does it mean? Let me show you. So. Yeah, here we go. So first of all, uh, you can notice here in the code that we have some inputs. We have bool input and we have input 2 is a float. And you can see it here, we have bool input and input 2 is a float, just like that. So please notice, important thing, and I pass them by value, not by reference. Why? Because if I pass the value by reference, like this, this will be considered outputs. So this is very good thing because typically in C++ you are using arguments to write some outputs. And of course the the way how the code works is that you cannot specify more than one output here in this syntax. So typically you specify them in arguments. And when you make a reference this is the way how you tell the real system that this is actually that this actually will be an output. For our function. So this function it has multiple inputs and multiple outputs that you can use and you can compute anything you want there. And you will ask me, well, sorry, you will ask me, well, what if I want to have a, a reference but I want it to have an as an input. So I don't want Unreal System to make it instantly an output. Well then you just specify the reference as a const because when you have an input you are really interested to not modify the value of the input, right? So that's that's why you put here const, and this makes a lot of sense actually. So if we call again this multiple outputs with the reference input, here you go. Here is the ref input. So it's just like that, and you can have a lot of inputs, a lot of outputs, and you can see here that they are all used as uh, let's say they are passed by values here. So if you put here, uh, let's say, uh, pointers to the object types, to the Unreal object types, they will be passed by, by references, by a normal. And then, these are, these are the things about Blueprint callables. Now, we have two more types to discuss. We have a Blueprint native event and Blueprint implementable events. And unlike the U functions, we have this blueprint callable over everywhere, and you can see that I have an implementation for these callables. So I have to implement them in, in uh, C++, and then after that, I can use them in code. So these functions should have a body; they should have should do something basically. Well, we have also blueprint native events and implementable events. And why, while Blueprint Native Event may have its implementation in C++, Blueprint Implementable Event doesn't have, doesn't, and shouldn't have the implementation in C++. But let's talk about the Native Event first. So, the Blueprint Native Event uh, is the kind of stuff that you are calling somewhere in the code, uh, in, in your code here in C++ code, and this is an event, so you call it at some point, and its body gets gets executed, basically. And why is it used? Well, because you can override it. So, let me see where my line is there. Yeah, this is a native event. So, 
somewhere in the code, you can say like in this class, in, in this function or whatever, you can say, hey, call this event. Or I can write it here, for example, I can write it to it. And then I derive from this class with my player char and I say, hey, call this event uh, in C++. But here I say, hey, give some extra functionality to this event. So the body of this event will be here. Yeah, I can write it here. And when I write it here, I overwrite my implementation in C++. And in order to also call my implementation, I can right-click my event and say, hey, call the parent function. And then it will call the parent function, and then it will let me do my own stuff. So I can override this event, I can call it parent, which is a lot of functionality. And I can implement this event here, so I can write my code for this event. So, again, you have the player the class, and you derive some class from it, and you want to have this event, is to be implemented in Blueprints, to have different functionalities in the derived Blueprint class. So, you implement this event in the derived class, and you put its body there. And if you want, you can call the parent. Of course, you can make the implementation first and then call the parent, just like in C++. And one thing about the implementable events is that if you want to implement, to have different uh, default implementation C++, which I suggest you would have, then the way that you write it is that you write the event name in the CPP file, and then you write underscore implementation. And this is the way to tell the UHT to mark this as, as an implementation for this event. So not just like that, but with the implementation uh, sign. And this will be the default body, it will be called. If it will be called if you derived and didn't make an implementation for an event, for the event. Well, we have more simplistic event, which is a Blueprint implementable event. Now, these events are not suggested to be implemented in, in C++ at all. So, for example, that you have a designer working on your game and you don't want him to get into the CPP code because it's not his job. And you made some system for death of the character, let's say, right? And your death includes respawn and other system. And then you think that, well, I want to have some fancy animation on my character. Well, then you can have a death event and then you can have something like receive death event. And receive death event will be a blueprint implementable event. And so you make it such a way that when the character dies, it's calling the blueprint implementable event receive death. And you are not the one who implements it because you are not a designer or whatever. So you tell your designer, hey, hey, I make this event for you. It's empty now. It's being called from the C++ code, but it has no body. So you can just go to blueprints and implement it your way. Change animation, physics, enable physics so the character falls out or whatever. So, why is it cool? Well, because you just define this event here, you call it somewhere from code, and you don't have to make a body for it. So, until this event is implemented in here, uh, let me see, where is it? Here we go. Until this event implemented in Blueprints, it still can be called uh, from the visual uh, sorry, from the C++ code during the runtime, but it will do nothing. And when you want, you can implement it. If, if you don't want to implement it in some derived classes, you don't have to. You don't have to have a default implementation for this event. And this is really useful most of the time. <coughs> so, uh, here are the U function types, some basics. There are other stuff, like there is an exact type of blueprint function, which um, Sorry, of view function that you can use in console to uh, call them basically just from console, and yeah, so this is it. There are there is also meta with some stuff like friendly name, but I've seen quite a lot of tutorials and videos about that, so I think you can find it find it by yourself. And I hope you found this tutorial useful. Um, for me, it would be definitely useful, like something like four months ago, as I said before. And later on, as I promised, I will make a tutorial about delegates and how to use those. So, 
there are these multi multicast delegates and dynamic delegates and combination of those with multiple return times and parameters and they are very useful in the code. So thank you for watching and see you later. Bye bye.